About eight years ago, the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department put together a high-rise committee to look at the way that we fight fire in high-rise structures. It was at that time they determined that we should move from using inch and three-quarter hose to two and a half inch hose for our high-rise firefighting. The two and a half inch high-rise pack was put into service. In the past eight years, there's been many new studies done on more efficient ways to tackle this challenging task of fighting fires in high-rise structures. The high-rise committee has again taken a look at our overall strategies and tactics and asked questions about what changes the people in the field would like to see. We then took that information and combined it with information that we gathered from some of the fire departments across this country that fight high-rise fires on a regular basis. We took a look at their setup and deployment of their high-rise pack and used some of their ways and blended it with our department to come up with a more efficient high-rise pack. In this video, you will learn how to set up the new pack and the two ways to deploy that pack, one being a hallway stretch, the other being a stairwell stretch. Today we're going to discuss the setup and deployment of the new Kansas City High Rise Pack. Uh, at this point we're going to show you how to set up a 50 foot section because we are go going from two 100 foot sections to four 50 foot sections. At this time the first thing I recommend is you mark your hose at 32 inches from the end of the female cup link. That will be our reference point for our first fold and the reason we do that 32 inches is because we want to keep this as tight and compact as possible so that when we're carrying it up the stairs it doesn't hit us in the back of the legs. The other thing that I highly recommend is you mark your hose, your 50 foot section of hose you mark in the middle of that section with a highly visible marking and that will be for line of sight later in the video we'll discuss and show you why that we want to do that. At this point, as we discussed, we're going to make our first fold at the 32 inch mark. And we're basically, our first fold is going to be approximately four to six inches from the end of the female coupling. And we're basically just doing an accordion style fold back and forth. As we do this fold, we want our folds on each side to be staggered so that we're not building up our folds on one side or the other, which will help make this pack more compact. I can't stress enough how important it is that we keep this pack as tight as possible. Uh, it makes it easier to carry on all of us up the stairs and makes us more versatile with this pack. What we want to do is take the last part of our hose and we want to connect the female section to the male section so that we're protecting the threads. This hose is a high volume low pressure hose. Our connections are vitally important. You can see that we've got a little bit of tail left over at the end of this 50 foot section. So basically what we do is pull the excess back to the other side and tuck it up in the middle and that's how we take care of that. We'll roll it up on edge. We'll flatten it out and make sure that this pack is as tight as possible. We have three Velcro straps that we will put on this 50 foot section. At this point, we take our three Velcro straps. We put two of the straps on the female side, one strap on the male side. The reason that we do this is we wanna keep this uniform across the department. It's possible that we could be deploying this high rise pack in a light smoke area or an area where we have not much light. We want all of our packs on all of our apparatuses to be 
the same across the city. So no matter what rig you're on, you know how to fold the pack and how everything is put together on that high rise pack. Again, I repeat, we put two straps on the female side, one strap on the male side, and we'll show you later in the video why we also use that as a line of sight for when we set this pack together. This 50 foot section, you can see that it hangs on the back of the tank, nice, tight, and compact, and it's not hitting him in the back of the knees as we go up, ascend the stairs. That's how we do the new KCFD high rise pack. On this 50 foot section of the high rise pack, this is the section that will have the nozzle. We basically fold the 50 foot, this 50 foot section the exact same way as we did the one we just showed you. We attach the nozzle, we connect the nozzle tight up against the pack, and again, we take the tail that we have left over, bring it around, and tuck it up inside the other side. Again, we have three straps that go on this 50 foot section, and the same as we discussed before, we put two of the straps on the female side and one strap on the male side. It's important that we keep this uniform, that all the sections are the same. And that is the nozzle section of the new high-rise pack. The hallway stretch. In order to deploy the hallway stretch, two criteria must be met. One, little or no smoke on the fire floor, meaning masks are not needed. Two, and most important, control of the fire room door. In this video, you are about to see 150 foot of two and a half will be used and there will be three drop points. One drop point for each 50 foot section that is deployed. Drop point one, first 50 foot section is always on the floor below the fire. Drop point two, second 50 foot section is just outside the stairwell door on the fire floor. The last drop point, nozzle section is in the front of the fire door. At this point, the fire attack group, two pumpers and a truck company arrive on the floor below the fire. For this scenario, the fire is on four and the pumper companies will be setting up on three. The two truck guys will continue to go up to the fire floor and investigate and let us know what the conditions are. So we can make the determinations if we need to do a hallway stretch need to do a stairwell stretch. They're packed the same way. And it's important at this point that the nozzle section you can see is pointing the direction that we go. And as we were talking earlier about the two straps being put on the female side, the reason for that is, as you can see, all of these sections get laid out in the exact same order. You can see that on the left side, there's two straps on each one of the 50 foot sections. And the reason for that is, is we will now take the straps off of this and hook all the sections together. We're gonna gather the information from the truck company and they are telling us that we have a clear hallway. We do not have to wear our masks in that hallway. The most important piece of information we're gonna gather from them is we have control of the fire apartment door or we have door control of the fire room. The hallway stretch basically meaning that we can stretch all of our sections dry and we can keep as many kinks out of it as possible and have a nice straight stretch. Um, at this point we gathered the information that we have clear conditions up there and we do have fire control. So we're gonna start setting up. They've also uh, told us that the fire apartment is halfway down the hallway on the right hand side. So we're gathering all this information on the floor below and setting up so that we can make a determination how much hose we're going to need and we also get a layout of the floor below. For a hallway stretch,
we've determined that 150 feet of hose will be enough uh, for the stretch that we have to make. We have the possibility of taking this single line all the way up to 400 feet. So at this point, we've determined that 150 feet will reach us to our destination of the floor below the fire room. We're going to hook up three sections. First section having the nozzle, second section hooks to the first one, and so on. The third section will also hook to the standpipe. We have enough hose up here on the floor below to have a backup line. One good thing about this setup on this new high-rise pack is we're able to go from 50 feet to 400 feet um, with one line. Uh, another advantage to this is that we have eight people that can work on this two and a half. We will take two sections for drop point two and three. Like I said, the hallway stretch, there are three drop points, one being the floor below. The captain and the firefighter head upstairs to the fire floor. And you notice that the hose is not coming off of their back. They're pulling it from the floor below. At this point, the captain and the firefighter come up the stairwell to the fire floor. Which at this point becomes drop point two the floor below the fire where we had our initial setup, any extra line that is down on the floor below on this floor should be pulled back, deployed out. You see you use the marking on the middle section of the hose to pull it out and uh, get rid of any kinks that we may have in the line. The two and a half inch line is a high volume, low pressure line. And the most important thing about this setup is, is we have the least amount of friction points as possible so that we have as much pressure as we can't afford to lose any pressure due to kinks in the line. Okay. The captain and the firefighter come under the fire floor and it's drop point two. The firefighter drops his second bundle and the captain continues down the hallway deploying the hose off of the second bundle as he goes. As the captain continues down the hallway, deploying the excess off of bundle two, drop point three is in front of the fire apartment door. We'll lay the bundle down in front of the door. We're going to look at the door at this point of the fire apartment and we're going to look and see what side the hinges are on. We want to deploy the hose the same side that the hinges are on. That will assist in keeping the door open. The mark at the middle of your hose will grab and deploy the line. Any extra hose will be pulled down the hallway, again to assure that we have a nice straight line with no kinks. Again, we've determined that the hinges are on the left hand side, so we deployed the line to the left hand side so that when we take the line in, it will assist in keeping the door open. We have everything in place. Call downstairs to have, we'll mask up. Call downstairs to have the line charged, and we're ready for our attack. That's the hallway stretch. The stairwell stretch. We will deploy the stairwell stretch when the conditions on the fire floor require us to mask up before exiting the stairwell onto the fire floor. In this video you are about to see, 150 foot of 2.5 will be used and there will be two drop points. The stairwell stretch will always have only two drop points. Drop point one is on the floor below the fire. Drop point two is in the stairwell behind the door of the fire floor. The second phase of this new high rise pack is the stairwell stretch. Fire attack group comes up to the floor below the fire just like we did before in the hallway stretch. 
The truck company goes to the fire floor. They have determined that we have a smoke-filled environment on the hallway of the fire floor. So we do not have tenable conditions up there. Uh, at this point, we made the determination that we'll have to do a stairwell stretch. The difference between a stairwell stretch and a hallway, like I said, a hallway has a minimum of three drop points. The stairwell stretch has two. This is always drop point one, the floor below the fire. Drop point two will be at the stairwell door of the fire floor. Since the stairwell stretch, we only have two drop points. The captain will put a 50-foot section on his shoulder, and that will be taking up to the second drop point. At this point, the captain and his firefighter advance to one section up to the fire floor. We will drop the section. Now each building is different. We only want to take hose up to the next landing. Some buildings is gonna be 20 stairs, some is gonna be five. This particular building is extremely small. We do not wanna go up around a corner and create any more friction points or put any of our members above the fire floor. At this point, the captain's gonna grab, again, the mark on the middle of the hose and advance up the next flight of stairs. Again, this stairwell is extremely short and we're not going to be able to go very far. And he's going to advise the people, the firefighters below to pull any excess line back down below. You notice in the stairwell that we keep the hose to the outside of the stairwell. And any excess hose, the all excess hose needs to be taken down the stairs. We want to make sure that our nozzle is kept back approximately four to five feet away from the door because when we charge this two and a half, it's going to want to push the nozzle into the door. We are ready to mask up and charge the line. The truck company has fire control door of the control of the fire door. The second firefighter will stand on the stairwell below and his job is to make sure that the hose stays up on the outside and facilitate pulling the line up above. The firefighter one that is with the captain will also make sure that the hose feeds down when the truck company opens the door. Now the advantage of this is that we have eight people in our fire attack group to help assist with this two and a half. I know it's heavy uh, on this particular stretch. Uh, again, the advantage of this system is we have eight of us to work this two and a half. At this point, the truck company would, we would charge the line, the truck company will open the door. We have four people there, the two truck guys, the captain, and the first firefighter to start the advance down the hallway of the fire floor. Like I said, firefighter two is down here. This is his level of operation. Firefighter three is down below. We also have other firefighters on the floor below, and we'll go down there and show you what their responsibilities are. This is Firefighter 3, again on the landing below with the same job. He's to assist in keeping the hose to the outside and facilitate pulling any line in from the floor below at our connections on the standpipe. On the floor below the fire where we had our initial setup, any extra line that is down on the floor below on this floor should be pulled back, deployed out. You see, they use the marking on the 
middle section of the hose to pull it out and uh, get rid of any kinks that we may have in the line. The two and a half inch line is a high volume, low pressure line. And the most important thing about this setup is, is we have the least amount of friction points as possible so that we have as much pressure as we can't afford to lose any pressure due to kinks in the line. That's the stairwell stretch. It is important to remember after watching these videos, this is a baseline for us to operate from. There are many situations that we can encounter in the field that would cause us to modify the way that we deploy this high rise pack. You're encouraged to get out into your district, learn the layout of the high rise buildings in your area and be better prepared when the situation arises.